Happy New Year to everyone from CSO Online. This is Susan Bradley, and I'm going to talk about how to make yourself a little less low-hanging fruit in year, the year 2020. So what's the idea of low-hanging fruit? It's a concept that attackers go after what's easy. And if you make yourself a little bit harder to be attacked, they'll go after somebody else. I'm going to hit some highlights about how you can make yourself a little bit more safer in the year 2020. First up, we're going to talk about ways to protect how you get in so that they can't get in. Number one, you want to pr protect remote access and management access. There's many ways that you gain access to your network, and the attackers know this too. So if you gain access to your network in any of these methodologies, SSH, Telnet, FTP, NetBIOS, LDAP, Kerberos, RDP, management services over a web port, MS SQL, Oracle, MySQL, or VNC, the attackers know that you get in that way too. So first ask yourself, is there any way that you can add, add two-factor authentication to these access or stop doing these accesses altogether? You may have to add third-party products such as Duo, which adds two-factor authentication for RDP, you may have to check with your vendors to see if they can provide more secure ways to access these management ports. Remember, even Microsoft is realizing that we need to take better actions. They're going to be enforcing LDAP signing in March of 2020, so remember to review those settings now to determine if you're ready for those upcoming changes. Review if you need to reset Kerberos passwords, especially if you suspect credential reuse in your own organization. If you recently have retired older operating systems, such as Server 2008 or Su Server 2008 R2, remember you may wish to reset those passwords for any read-write domain controllers and read-only domain controllers. I've got some links on some posts that you can go to to reset those passwords. Next up, we have to protect our credentials better. Right now, we choose really bad passwords and we tend to reuse them a lot. So make sure that you Check out those pass the hash attacks and what you can do to defend from them. Start with the low hanging fruit and stop using land manager and NTLM v1. You may find that especially that as you retire these older server 2008 domain controllers that you can disable land man and NTLM without any problem at all. Now comes a little bit harder dealing with the end users. Review your password policy rules and educate users to pick better passwords. Remember that if you have a password policy that requires people to change passwords often, they don't typically choose better passwords. Be aware of how often you reuse passwords in an organization. Use a password manager program. Use the LAPS toolkit, the local administrator password solution in your network organization to set local administrator passwords so they're not the same throughout the organization. Too often attackers get in, able to harvest a single local administrator credential on a workstation, and off they go throughout the entire organization because they know that we're, we tend to reuse that same local administrator password throughout our entire network. Especially as you get rid of server 2008 and 2008 R2 domain controllers, take the time to review your Active Directory. I've got some scripts linked to to scan and check all accounts in the Active Directory Forest for account and password hygiene. You'll need to add a, a couple of PowerShell downloads. One is for the um, LithNet and the other is for DS internals and use those modules to check your Active Directory. LithNet is an AD password protection module. You can find it on GitHub. And DS internals can be installed by a little script that says install module DS internals force. And some of the things you want to look for in your organization, this is on my own domain and I have some work to do. For example, you want to look at that column that says has LM hash. And if it's true, like that one there and that one there, I need to make sure those are out of our organization because they are low hanging fruit and attackers can come in and harvest those hashes and use them. I also want to make sure that I see what's going on with these shared passwords. That's not good. You can see the hash values there. And again, I've got some cleanup in my network as well. So take the time to review your Active Directory and see what's going on. Next up, know that 
browsers and email are the new entry port points into our network. Attackers know that our users are the, our weakest links. They also know that users can be tricked into clicking on things. So browsers and emails are the number one way that entries come into our network. For email, look for the use of attack tools such as Ruler, you can see it on GitHub, that abuses the client-side Outlook features and gains a shell remotely. To counter such attacks for on-premise deployments, there's a tool called, what else? Not Ruler, which you can use to investigate and review your Exchange environment to make sure it hasn't been compromised. For Office 365, you can use PowerShell to audit and review if rules or injections have been set up. Remember, multi-factor authentication is your friend here. For browsers, you want to review and set up policies and set up boundaries for what users can download and install into their browsers. You want to use group policy or Intune and set limitations of what users can install. Remember, Chromium-based Edge will be coming out to Windows 10 as an update in January of 2020. So look for that coming soon. Get ready to control the Edge-based Chrome in your organization using both group policy and Intune. So this is just a start of some of the low-hanging fruit that I want you to look at your, your network and see if you too need to do some work for 2020. Stay tuned as we re review more of these techniques. As always, don't forget, we're here on Tech Talk on the IDG YouTube channel for the tech news of the day. Hope to see you there as well. This is Susan Bradley for CSO Online.